What's cracking? This DJ Crazy Tunes and I'm lounging with the raw hip hop heads. And it's all raw, cause just keep your eyes open. We might have to duck a little bit. It might go down where we are. DJ Crazy Tunes been putting it down with my brother Dub C. We always been, we've been infatuated with the music since we heard like the old school hip hop. Nobody in LA was really doing hip hop like that. But we heard everything from like the East Coast. And we always been fans of that. And everybody from the West Coast is fans of that too. And that's the truth. Ain't nobody gonna say it, but that's where we came up from, like the KRS ones and the hip hop heads like that. And we just put our twist on it. So that's where it came from. Okay. Uh, so my next question to you would be, how did you and Dub C uh, form the Mad Circle? Dub C and the Mad Circle, we started that after Low Profile kind of went in separate ways. Low Profile was WC and DJ Latin, dope ass DJ, one of the dopest DJs from California, period. When they broke up and kind of went their separate ways, we started the Mad Circle, which was uh, Minority Alliance Against uh, Anti-Discrimination, Mad, two, D, two A's, no two D's, Mad Circle. We started that, put that group together and it's been on ever since, you know. It's, it's speaking on social issues and real shit. That, that whole record, if you ever heard it, you know, you'll know what I'm talking about. That's respect, influence, man. That's what's up. Uh, uh, my next question to you would be, you know, how you got a, a mixtape called the CT Experience, you know? How did that How did that come about? CT Experience, the CT Experience mixtape came out like around 2006. I basically I did a mixtape like I always do my mixtapes and I was just lounging. I was lounging around my house somewhere and I went up to uh, Capitol Records to see my homeboy Robert Red and he had a homeboy named Dada. I, Dada I always do all the filming and stuff for everybody out here on the West Coast. And they heard the mixtape and they called me in. It was like, hey man, you should, I want to shoot a video to this whole mixtape. I said, what? I don't want to do that shit because I was thinking that that's the that's way I could get sued by people because I didn't clear the music. I was really just doing a street mixtape and a street mixtape. That's how you did it. You just took other people's music and you juggled the records while, while your MC rapped on top of it. That was a mixtape. Mixtapes nowadays is unfinished demos. Y'all hear it's an unfinished demo, but this was a mixtape. And if you hear me do a mixtape, I may have a couple of original songs on there, but for the most part, it's gonna be other hip hop head, his beats and shit with us busting our stuff on top of it. I'm gonna turn it into a real song. That's what make the mixtape sound different from everybody else's. Cause I ain't just coming on and new shit, new shit. I ain't doing all that. Okay. It's speaking for itself. When you hear it, you'll know. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, there's a lot of artists coming out of LA, coming out of the LA area, you know, that's up and coming right now. Like uh, I use the Kendricks, Games, Games been out for a minute. Uh, he's actually featured on on CT Experience. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, with with LA growing so much, you know, who would you would you consider working with? You know, from the area. I like everybody that's trying to do hip hop. If you can't do it and you come with a cool attitude, trust me, we gonna holler and I'm gonna give you the goods on what to do, what not to do. If I see you really trying. And it's something that's gonna keep a sack not being in your hand, I'm here to help. But you gotta listen. You gotta wanna listen. But I like everybody that's that's like the newer, the newer generation that's getting down from the schoolboy Q to Kendrick Lamar to Old Boy from out the APB, I forgot his name. It's a it's a lot of niggas that's rapping that you hear that's, that's got it cracking from Nipsey Hustle to our artist Melee. It's a whole lot of new fresh talent coming. Yep, that's cool, man. Um, you know, uh, in an article I read not too long ago, it said that uh, yourself in the mass circle, you know, you guys broke up and uh, you guys got back together. And then, you know, you, I guess you, you broke up again. Um, you know, do you think that there's a possibility that all you guys will reconnect again and, you know, make some make something for us? The original Mad Circle members? Yes. Meaning WC and Coolio, will they ever get together and do another yes. record together? 
Who knows, you know? We don't know. We don't know. I mean, there never has been talks about it because Dub is doing this thing with choreographer and the movies kind of situations on how you move on stage and what to do. He did that for the NWA Straight Outta Compton movie, and he's working on his kids' football, my, my nephew's football stuff, which is going on, and he's still doing music, but them two getting together and doing it again, it would be dope. It would be dope. I never could say it won't happen, you know, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, you mentioned Coolio, man. You know, uh, Coolio was one of the, the hottest rappers of his time. Uh, you know, how did you guys link up with Coolio? Coolio, we linked up with Coolio through a, a DJ named DJ Latin, which was WC's DJ. Compton DJ, super bad, super. Check DJ Latin, super hard. But Coolio, we met him through DJ Latin. Coolio's from a group called New School, and he was always a nigga that knew how to rap, to be at the uh, Water in the Bushes, the Ice Tea events, and getting down. So that's how that connected. Okay. And, it, and it ain't never stopped from then, you know, but we ain't hollered at Cooley in a long time. He's still a homie, what's up? But, you know, he doing what he do, we doing what we do. Okay. Um, you know, with all the hype about uh, Straight Outta Compton, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm sure you got a chance to see it. You saw your boy uh, Ice Cube in it. Um, you know, what, what did you think of the movie itself? I think the movie was dead on point. I did an interview a long time ago in like 2011, y'all can find it. It's online somewhere. And I basically verbally spoke spoke what I knew about it. And that's what was shown on the camera. But there was a lot of stuff that was shown on the camera I didn't know, you know. Which I think the movie was real dope. And it's a dope, it's a dope look for the West Coast period to me. But other people that's personal in it may think different, but I think it was a good look. Uh, okay. Um, do you think you could have had a little, a little bit, you know, more to do with it yourself? You know, dealing with Ice Cube and you know his solo career. Um, with with, with the NWA movie. Yeah. Straight out of Compton movie. Yeah. Uh, no, that's kind of was out my league. That was them. You know, that's what they did. Which you know they're the homies and everything. But I ain't had no verbal say so on none of that. Um, did anyone contact you about it at all? About the movie? Yeah. Well, how well, did you hear that it was even being made, you know? Well, I know that it, it was always talks about them making it. It just had to come around to come together. But for years, it always been talk about them, talks about them making a movie, you know, about the NWA. It, it basically changed the whole music game. People didn't know what to do before they came out verbally with their mouths and said what they did and stood up for what they stood for. Nobody else is doing that, you know? So it's basically, it's a breath of fresh air for music, period. You know, because we came from the days of where you're getting cussed out in the house by your mama and daddy and them, but then when you go outside, it's like, Shh, don't say that. But they came on record like, fuck that, and, and basically told our story, told the West Coast story on how we came up versus trying to be a, a dope MC. Yeah, we like the dope MC stuff, but do the dope MC stuff, what you talking about, once upon a time in the projects, yo. So that's that's NWA right there. And I think they did a damn good job. Okay, um, so another uh, legendary group besides Dub C and the Mad Circle, you know, uh, there was also uh, Lynch Mob. And if I'm not mistaken, Lynch Mob and, and Dub C and Mass Circle, you know, came together and obviously formed West Side Connection. You know, uh, you know, how did how did exactly did that come about and how was it like, you know, working with Mac Ten and and uh, all them? Well, the Lynch Mob, which is my homeboy J D, much love, I love you, homie. My homeboy Shorty, what's up, my nigga, I love you. And my nigga T-Bone with the 22, what's up my nigga, I love you. Them is the original, the Lynch Mob is a crew, but the original Lynch Mob group was those three I named. Much love to them, I can't speak on Lynch Mob until I say they names and props. Much love to everybody, yo yo, the whole crew, everybody. But we started the Mad Circle by us just sitting around like jotting back names and stuff when NWA and Q kind of broke up whatever, we was just going back and forth with different names, and a name was spoke on, 
it was, it was basically my brother Dub C and Ice Cube speaking together. And they were saying something like, man, what the group name could be. Dub was trying to figure out the group name for him, and Q was trying to figure out a group name for him. Q stuck with the lynch mob, Dub wanted to roll with the Mad Circle, but Q was the one who named the group the Mad Circle, for real. And Dub just put WC and the Mad Circle on. And we formed Minority Alliance Against Discrimination, basically speaking about where we come from, not bragging on what barracking about what we got. We speaking on like the, the poor coming up and the whole struggle, everything, you know, like real life music until it switched and changed. It switched all the way around. It's to where they kicked like the brand newbies and the public enemies and the social conscious type rappers. They basically like this. Speak on having that gun, nigga. Speak on, you know, all of the bullshit. You know, we, we speak on the realness and we speak on the, the, the truth about being MCs too. That's how we come together with our our groups and how we kind of stay, you know what I mean, keeping it cracking. Okay, okay. Um, you know, I spoke on the CT experience earlier, uh, but you know, I was I, I just uh, got a video from Pete with you and uh, Dub C, you know, a, a brand new video that you guys did not to, not too long ago. Yeah. Um, you know, is there a new CT experience coming yeah, out? The new CT experience is coming. The new one is coming, it's, and it's called When Is The Next One Coming? That's what the title's gonna be. Y'all gonna hear, I've been offline, I ain't been saying nothing, I'm just like this. Been going on the road with Q. When, we ain't, when he ain't doing no movie stuff, and we ain't really doing nothing every other weekend or something. We'll go out of town and we'll attack. We've been doing festivals, rocking like 30,000 motherfuckers, so we staying busy. But I am working and continuing to work to finish the CT experience. When is the next one coming? CT experience. When is the next one coming? Because every time I come out, first thing y'all ask me, when is the next one coming? That's the name of the next one. When is the next one coming? CT experience, DJ Crazy Tunes. I ain't fucking around neither. And y'all better keep practicing because the equipment is getting better, but y'all are getting whacker. I'm sorry. I hear your skills and I ain't impressed. I ain't saying nothing because I'm just going to do this. And we're going to see. <laughs> okay. All right, man. Yeah. Uh, I know DJ Ski helped you out with that project, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. DJ Ski, the homeboy, DJ Reflex, the homeboy. Like I said, it came together from, with the CT experience, I did my mixtape how I usually do them. They said, no, nah, man, we think it's going visual now. Why don't you film what you did? Just let us film what you did. We just basically filmed what I did. And Robert Red, da da. They, I said, hell no, I don't want to do it. I went home. I took a quick rest. I woke up and I said, yeah, let's do it. And I did it and it, it blew up and it ain't stopped. It ain't stopped, it kept going, you know? So that shit is, that's why that happened. I smell some bug, but I don't see it. All right, so flag good. on the flag, sorry, y'all. Uh, no, it's all good. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a lot of DJs in the game right now. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, there's a lot of people that consider you pretty much a legend in this DJ game. You know what I mean? Is there, uh, as far as DJing, do you consider yourself, you know, the the best DJ there is? No, not at all, because to be a DJ, you got to have different kind of skills. It's a DJ that could be, that it's a DJ that's known like a Kid Capri. Much love Kid Capri. He a dude that's known for, when he get up there, he going to rock the party. He's going to have people sweating and going crazy. <laughs> it's another DJ that could go up there and could, cut and scratch real good and, and got the tricks to do like all the tricks on the tables. It's another DJ that's the kind of DJ that can sit in, in a uh, studio with his drum machine and turntable and making a beat and doing what he do. So it's like all kind of ways of being a DJ. I like all the DJs, everybody that's a DJ. That's, that's even up and coming DJ. If your mama just bought you a computer and you want to just space bar press ass nigga, much love to you, you know, but you got to step out the way a little bit because when, when the real come, oh, it's on the crack. And much love, Premier. That's my homeboy, DJ Premier. Pete Rock, all of my homeboys. Joe Cooley, 
one of the ones that started me, DJ Joe Cooley, one of the hardest DJs, period, too. And I say I am, too. I'm DJ Crazy, too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, obviously, you've, you've toured, I want to say, around the world with Ice Cube before, you know what I mean? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you guys were recently in Europe, too? Like. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 we go so many damn places. I just came back from Chicago and, fuck. I don't know, we go everywhere, but... Okay. No. Oh, they just came back from doing the movie in Europe. I, I wasn't on that one. That was just a movie run, but we're getting ready to bank back around and start doing uh, the Europe run, too. Again, we did Australia. We we, we did Russia. We, we kind of touched every place, and we keep going. We still just got to keep putting our records in, rocking. Not just putting our records and thinking that we could just go up there. No. Every time they comes, every time y'all come see us, it's gonna be something different every time because we bringing the energy. Dub C and Ice Cube on stage together is hands down. You can't fuck with them. And now we got, I got a major, major video screen behind me now that I control. You gotta come see the show. DJ Crazy Tunes, Ice Cube, Dub C, come check us out. It's going down. Okay. Um, so with, with traveling around the world, you know, in, in LA, there's a lot of people, you know, that that that's feeling your music. Obviously, that you, you going out of out of the country, you know what I mean, to, to perform. Um, how does that make you feel when you see like you touch people's lives in in Europe? You know what I mean, in Australia, you know what I mean, and all those places. It, it, it make you say like all the bullshit that's going on, whatever in your life, if it is anything that's negative and you kind of think about it, you kind of frown on it, you just smile and you think about them people that smiled at you and asked for your autograph and was real fans and was reciting mixes and stuff and raps that you've done. It, it, it's a good feeling. It makes me feel and it makes me say, devil, you a bitch ass lie, nigga, I'm the man. I'm standing up, I'm, I'm smiling, I'm happy because it's people that I don't even know that's giving me props and I love that. That's what keeps me going. That's the energy that keeps me going. Okay, that's that's, that's real cool, man. That's respect too, because you know, like like I said, there's a lot of people that look up to you, you know, that that's that's doing stuff because of you. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 so, yeah. Um, with that being said, would you ever decide to hang up the mic, man, and call it quits? No, I never. I mean. I never went to college. I never did none of that. I went to school. I finished all my schools as far as like preschool to high school, finished that shit. And I never went to be an architect or anything. What else I'm gonna do? If I stop doing this shit right now, even though y'all whacking some motherfucker in it, what else I'm gonna do? I gotta keep doing it. And I'm gonna keep doing it because I got the skill to keep doing it. Respect, I man. I love it, we love it. Respect. Okay, man, like I said, I ain't gonna take too much of your time, so we about to, uh, you know, draw draw to the end here. Yeah. Um, if you want to just go ahead and uh, give us your name again, man, and then, you know, shoot a uh, shout out to Raw Hip Hop Heads, and, you know, we'll, we'll wrap it up here. What's cracking? I'm DJ Crazy Tunes, and we lounging, the sun is going down, and we all out here, you know, because it's Raw Hip Hop, Raw Hip Hop Heads, Raw Hip Hop Heads out in this motherfucker. We just did the interview, and I love everything. Keep up the love, keep up the motherfucking support of the homies raw hip hop heads, and you will see us again. And keep listening, because I know your punk ass space bar on your computer work. Keep listening, because I am coming. <laughs>